I think it's very telling that in 2015, the um, modern prophets like uh, Jonathan Kahn, with his sudden best-selling books about the God's ancient prophecies to the Jews driving modern history, and that uh, this Shemitah year is uh, the thing that's so important in the vital perspective of paying attention to God's prophecies. And wow, where'd this guy come from? Just out of nowhere. And and now he's got congressmen listening to him. He's got heads of industry. He's got people applauding him across the board. Christians are bowing to him. I, you know, I've listened to him now a couple of times and I don't hear one shred of understanding of scripture, really. And he's, he's quoting a little law out of Deuteronomy here and Leviticus, um, the law of Moses now, and applying it suddenly to the Christian world. And I'm not sure how you how you justify that. You really can't. You, it undermines everything Paul taught, and that's why you don't hear anything about uh, from Joseph, uh, Jonathan Kahn about what Paul taught. You don't hear anything about um, the prediction of dead rising uh, and the Messiah being the one to save the Jews from all this predicament you just get this sudden fear tactic about the economic uh, fallout that's coming because of God's law so I find that that this sort of prophet is nothing but smoke and mirrors and modern hype and sensationalism and perhaps they're using them to tell everybody that the stock market's going to crash and they can blame God for it. But they're certainly not enlightening anybody about Scripture. And yet, I've been doing a little research on Nostradamus. And this is someone who claimed in his own writings he'd be more relevant and popular in the future than he was at his time. And he gained some popularity in his time because of some of the things he saw that came true in his lifetime. He lived in the 1500s, the early and up to the mid 1500s. And so 500 years ago, basically, this guy got all these prophecies. And I just want to throw a few down um, and let people decide whether he's worth studying. A lot of his stuff's been coming true all through history, but he makes a point of saying that his most important stuff has to do with the end and the final Antichrist and a warning to the future that perhaps some of these events that he sees might even be averted because of course he sees a certain cataclysmic destruction as many of the the great religious seers uh, have noted and nobody wants to pay attention to that these days since it's all actually happening so I just made a list of a few trying to you know, there's a lot of debate as to how many of his things have already come to pass, how many are about future events. And so some are clearly about future events and some aren't. So here's just a few that uh, came to me. He talks about um, a war going on for many years, 27 years, he says, and, and in his words, so many evils committed that nearly all the world will find itself undone and desolate. But before these events, before these events that lead to some, the, all this evil that leads the world to be undone and desolate, but before these events, some rare birds will say, today, today, and sometime later, will vanish. And that's very interesting, and most people, of course, um, interpret it to be actual birds. But he says in the prelude to his prophecies that much of what he said is meant it needs a key is meant to be found a key because he couldn't afford to just threaten the people in power at the time or say things that were as as direct as he would have liked to so he put them in 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 code and it's been and he intended for us to know what he meant and so for me knowing Judaic Christian scripture that just says you know this small group of people like my father and I that have been saying for years before these events look what's coming here's what's coming and anticipating that what will happen is the dead in Christ will rise first on first fruits 
issuing a 40-day warning for the Jews. And so that will be the time when these rare birds will be saying, today, today, the dead rose. And we'll be the only people in the world that actually can identify that event for what it is, because it won't be on CNN that way. Um, and sometime later, we'll vanish. So that's a picture of the rapture to me. Here's another one. At latitude 4080, he says, at the end of cancer, being a reference to the astrological age and sign of cancer, such a drought, fish in the sea, rivers, lakes, boiled, Birn and Bigor, places in France, distressed by fire in the sky. Is that meteor showers? Is that plasma made by our um, you know, military industrial complex whose weaponized space as we know? Is that what that refers to that? Specific though, latitude 48. It's interesting that up at that latitude on this side of the world where you've got um, Vancouver and British Columbia, uh, we've just been watching how all the sea life is dead there. The tide pools along those shores that were once the, among the richest in that region of the, of the world are completely dead. Starfish literally are, look like they've been boiled. Fish have skin coming off of it. Dolphins and whales beached with, with their skin peeling off as if they're boiling. Anyway, interesting. Here's another one. The Antichrist three very soon annihilates. His bloody war lasts 27 years bloody human bodies, red water, hail upon the earth. Um, he's clearly in his quatrain speaking of the final Antichrist uh, in this part of his um, revelations. So we know it's a time we haven't reached us. Three very soon annihilates, which as we've been teaching seems to me saying the same thing that Daniel saw. Three horns will be plucked up by the roots to make way for this little horn, this lesser kingdom, this lesser power that causes three to be plucked up by the roots. And this one says three Antichrist, three very soon annihilates. Remember, this is 500 years ago. Um, when the great number seven is complete, appearing at the time of the Olympic Games, not long past the millennium, then the buried come out from their graves. <laughs> That's kind of interesting. The great number seven complete. Uh, I've heard some commentaries that's got to do with the Olympic rings that doesn't make sense to me but it does make sense the seven stars that the Christ holds in his hand in Revelation the seven churches have finally been complete the ages of the church are finally complete the Philadelphian church is of little strength and the Laodicean church that thinks that it's rich and has need of nothing but is lukewarm is in in full power and supporting the wars in Jesus name <laughs> just like the Jews have been supporting everything that is ungodly in God's name right up to the time of Jesus and when he called them on it you know they killed him so that's a very to me interesting appearing at the time of the Olympic Games which of course coming up in August this coming year uh, not long past the millennium uh, 2016 not long past the millennium the buried come out from their graves and we won't go into whether that's an argument for a September rapture or not um, although it seems to be. So we'll, we'll just let those Feast of Trumpets rapture people salivate over that one. But, but it is Nostradamus telling us something that seems quite relevant in our day and age, whereas we're listening to a guy like Jonathan Kahn who's, who's really feeding us just a bunch of scare about our economy. Uh, what does Nostradamus say? The economy will collapse. Uh, unemployment of the young especially leads to crime, depression, and extremism. Isn't that interesting? Uh, sounds like our lives right now. It's a longer uh, joint area of, of uh, commentary that he goes ahead and says the first four lines of this quatrain have already come to pass. They're about the establishment of, of uh, economic ways and powers. But he says in, the, in history he's referring to the leader of the Bank of Scotland and that the mount that he refers to in this quatrain refers to the Bank of Scotland, which operates for 300 years under these codes, these ethical codes, these banking codes of, of normalcy, which after 300 years lead to a collapse of the world economies through these two great banking powers. Um, through greed and corruption, primarily. 
So that's a very interesting one. You go back, when was the Bank of Scotland founded? 1695, about 150 years after these visions of Nostradamus, and 300 years on that would be 1995. Very interestingly, the time when savings and loan crisis and all these modern financial products really started to come to be. The time perhaps he's seeing when this 300-year-old institution had sold out to greed and corruption, which is going to lead to this great financial collapse. Um, he says, Muslim empire is usurped by a third of his kindred, meaning it's usurped by Muslims, a third of his brethren. The greater part put to death, a senile death, meaning they don't even, they don't even have an understanding of what's going on and why they're being killed. The fourth struck by him for fear that blood does not die by blood. Right? Same thing I've talked about a long time, the putting down of indigenous cultures and anyone who, by the very their very nature, especially the true religious nature, cannot abdicate to this banking system, cannot rely on this false system of debt and persecution for corporate profit. No, no real religious person could stand that. No real indigenous person could live under those conditions they'd rather die so well that's how you put that to death because the blood alone's not good enough you got to kill the idea um, so anyway there's also I'll leave you with one more for go on too long in Greece it says a great famine and pestilence caused by false dust and the word doesn't mean abnormal dust like volcanic dust Though, there, though I, as you've noticed, I've left out all the popular stuff Nostradamus says about volcanoes and earthquakes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. These are just some more of the, uh, a little more focused things. But he says, in Greece, this false dust, something that's not really dust, but I guess is called dust, uh, the whole Peloponnesian Peninsula will be affected for nine months by some pestilence caused by this false dust, which... You know, now we look at such things as radiation, you know, or biological warfare. And now you look, whoo, -hoo, Greece is in the middle of saying no to what, $5 billion in interest payments to the World Bank? I mean, these aren't the kind of guys you say no to. So, um, yeah, what what's the potential for this particular dust that's going to fall on Greece and torment them for nine months, the entire area, and cause a great famine like never before so anyway there's Nostradamus is a tough one to study anything I found on the internet because they don't present much of what's really relevant I, I, I most of the documentary especially if it's history channel or any of these mouthpieces they're terrible but if you study Nostradamus you'll find he seems very relevant and for my money he's certainly worth uh, your time where that uh, Jonathan Kahn nonsense is is not worth spreading. Hope this helps.